Hi guys, it is a chilly winter evening here in the collapse of global industrial civilization outside of Inverness, Florida, heading right to about freezing tonight. I think it's a little warmer in Antarctica, if I'm not uh, mistaken, here on Friday night. February 6th or 7th, uh, February 7th, 2020, but I got a lot on my plate for Saturday, so I'm going to make this Saturday's Chronicle of the Collapse, and uh, if you don't know who I am, uh, this is Sam Mitchell, and my little uh, sidekick, Sancho Panza, is asleep somewhere in the back of my gas-sucking truck, trying to stay warm tonight. But before I climb into the back of this ice mobile, I'm going to do what I do every day, or night in this case, and that's bring you today or tonight's Chronicle of the Collapse. And I am so sorry I cannot remember which Alert Tribes member sent me <coughs> this story by a fellow named Tim Stevenson. Tim Stevenson is a community organizer with Post Oil Solutions and author of Resilience and Resistance, Building Sustainable Communities for a post-oil age, and uh, Tim Stevenson has found his way into the Battleboro Reformer. That would be Battleboro, Vermont, where Tim's latest essay is titled, Learning to Live with Climate-Induced Societal Collapse, and I'm going to put the link on here. I encourage you to read this yourself, but if you just want me to sit around and read it for you, I'll be happy to do that. Take it away, Tim Stevenson, and tell us uh, how to live with climate-induced societal collapse. Perhaps the most difficult thing for human beings today, one that, however necessary, is impossible at the same time, is coming to grips with the possibility of imminent social collapse because of our unraveling climate. Understandably, most of us are paralyzed by the unthinkable. How will we survive? How will our children and grandchildren live in such a world? How can we deal with the suffering that such an event will inevitably entail. <clears throat> Two representative news reports this past December underscore just how critical our situation is becoming. <clears throat> the rapid warming of the Arctic, and I would say Antarctic, appears to be entering an out-of-control feedback loop the kind of tipping point long dreaded by scientists, the melting permafrost will release billions of tons of methane, a powerful greenhouse gas with a global warming potential, <coughs> 21 times that of carbon dioxide, resulting in still greater warming, melting and releasing of methane in a continuous deadly cycle. This news was followed days later by the collapse <coughs> without meaningful progress of the annual United Nations Climate Conference, which is dedicated to getting the governments of the world to significantly curb their carbon emissions. As in the past, the failure to take meaningful action <coughs> was blocked by a handful of industrial nations led by the U.S., which paid no heed to the warning of U.N. Secretary Antonio Guterres yeah. at the opening of the conference, who said, quote, The point of no return is no longer over the horizon. It is insight and hurtling toward us. 
actually Antonio the point of no return was about 50 years ago but uh, anyway you'll figure that out soon enough appearances to the contrary notwithstanding my purpose here is not to bury you further in doom and gloom I cite these two examples only to support my belief that collapse is a growing likelihood because a the climate is moving beyond human remediation b citizens and their governments are not stepping up and taking the substantial actions we must take immediately if we are to avoid catastrophe and c Time is truly running out on us. My working assumption is that if you have been paying attention and connecting the dots, you do not need another depressing climate dissertation about its alarming speed and severity and might be willing to begin considering how we live with such a disaster. We are entering unknown territory, a radically new normal with no map or GPS to guide us. Whatever our world becomes, it is increasingly evident that our civilization has entered its end game. It is not just the climate either, as catastrophic and definitive as that is. It is our way of life, the way we inhabit this planet, and the way we are in relationship with each other, and not just today, but for a long, long time as a consequence, we are increasingly living in what James Howard Kunstler once termed the long emergency. To live in this world, we will have to be imaginative and creative, light on our feet, shedding unnecessary and irrelevant baggage along the way, venturing outside of our comfort zone, open to new possibilities. Most importantly, we are going to have to figure out our relationships with one another so that we begin living with our fellow beings, human and non-human, peacefully with kindness and compassion. We need to accept the fact that we are on our own at best, we might be able to convince our governments to act before it is too late with the comprehensiveness and urgency, forget conscience, required to mitigate the worst of what is coming. Based on their performance thus far, however, I would not count on it. And now, uh, the Battleboro Reformer tells us this article continues after these ads. Divorce, bankruptcy, illness, repossession. We care about you, not why you have rough credit. We can get you approved for a new vehicle today. Ask about our guaranteed credit approval. Next to that ad, the 2020 Subaru Impreza. Yes, drive out for as little as $139 or month or save up to $2,400 off MSRP. View the inventory at Brattleboro Subaru. Okay, back to the story. That is why we, as individuals and communities, must take seriously the necessity for what is called deep adaptation, 
you know, right underneath the words deep adaptation, right underneath the words we can get you approved for a new vehicle today. Mm -hmm. I guess that's part of the Battle Bureau uh, reformers uh, recipe for deep adaptation, getting approved to buy a new Subaru Impreza. Anyway, what is deep adaptation? An approach that, in recognizing our pending collapse, seeks to moderate its impact through accommodation and, and adjustment. We accept that we can no longer change our situation sufficiently to avoid collapse, but must learn instead to live with the change that is inexorably occurring if we are to survive at all. And if we can just get approved to buy a new Subaru to, you know, to drive into the brick wall as part of our deep adaptation, you know, the better for us all. You know, uh, okay. The most important step in this process is to get approved for a new vehicle today. Yes. The most important step in this process is to come together with each other to break the silence about the unmentionable and begin talking with family friends and neighbors about what is happening to acknowledge and grieve what we are losing, being transparent about the powerlessness, sadness, fear, depression, rage, guilt, and other responses we have been stuffing away so we can get through another day of business as usual and get out there to get approved for a new vehicle today. This is not easy and is why so many of us avoid doing so. But ironically, ironically, it is just such vulnerability that we have been defending ourselves against that potentially elicits the very support and affirmation we most require from each other at this time. In this way, we will likely be less overwhelmed by and better prepared to respond to the collapse as it unfolds. Grounded in this kind of honesty, solidarity can emerge around the understanding that we are all in this together, further encouraging us to be the people of heart we inherently are. It is from such honesty and transparency that possibilities can arise that were invisible earlier when we were still operating as individuals, being there for each other, cooperating and collaborating, we begin to come into harmony with our inherent interconnection and interdependence with all living beings that our hyper-individualized way of life has long alienated us from. <clears throat> Becoming committed to each other's well-being is balm for the toxicity of our narcissistic civilization of the centrality of I that is killing us. Within this nurturing context, unscripted expressions of how can I help increasingly surface in our behavioral repertoire. Being of service to others is not only critical in a collapsing world where there will be so much to do. We discover that it is also invaluable to us for the inherent sense of rightness it imparts to us. Being helpful for its own sake when everything around us is 
falling apart provides us with the necessary meaning in life that we require to carry on. As this suggests, the foundation for all of this is a values-based outlook and approach <clears throat> founded upon the heart morality that most of us are born with. We don't need to reinvent ourselves. This potential though blighted and compromised from infrequent use, is nevertheless present any time we care to act on it, as evidenced by the times we have done precisely that when faced with life-threatening emergencies. <clears throat> Our problem is that we don't express these values with the moment-to-moment, -moment, everyday consistency required to not only survive the impending collapse, but more importantly, to survive to a world worth surviving in. <clears throat> At the core, the climate emergency is a spiritual crisis, one that has been brought about by our failure to act with moral courage to refrain from harming others and to doing the right thing as a way of life. As such, it is not a prescription for avoiding collapse, but it is a suggestion as to how we might live today, right now, from one moment to the next, together with coming home to mother to heal our original split from which our present crisis has arisen, embracing our heart values is the way life becomes worth living in this moment of pending collapse. Yes, thank you, uh, Tim Stevenson. We need to get Tim on the show again. Uh, he is a community organizer with Post Oil solutions and author of Resilience and Resistance, Building Sustainable Communities for a Post-Oil Age. The opinions expressed by colonists do not necessarily reflect the views of the Battleboro Reformer or of Collapse Chronicles. Okay, so if you enjoyed that story, here are some other items that may interest you. Okay, we have pro football news. Next to pro football news, we have auto racing news. Next to the auto racing news, we have the NASCAR standings. So under the uh, under the essay about building sustainable communities for a post-oil age with ads about vehicle loans and Subarus. We have more articles on auto racing, NASCAR standings, and pro football news. Okay, now we're going to look at a little bit of the sponsored content. Alright, let's pick out a uh, few examples of sponsored content. <clears throat> Rent a private jet. <clears throat> Rent a private jet. Current prices may surprise you. This is from Affordable Private Jets. Yes, let's see. Uh... If you would. All right, we have a new insurance policy for cars used less than 50 miles a day. Well, uh, that counts me out. Let's see. Here is more money, more chocolate. More money, more chocolate. Uh, here's some new cool technology. 
here, of course, have you seen all these new ads for coronavirus nanotech masks from OxyBreathe? More and more ads for coronavirus pandemic uh, face masks. Let's see. Uh, more ads for coronavirus uh, face masks. Uh, how about the new smartwatch is a life changer and it is selling fast. Yes. Uh, I like this one. The former Dakota restaurant sold with an eye on conversion to retail pot shop. <laughs> Good old Vermont, I think. I'm pretty sure weed is legal in Vermont, isn't it? But anyway, guys, uh, it is getting on uh, to the bewitching hour, and I'm getting ready to get turned into a pumpkin here and uh, I need to wrap up today's chronicle of the collapse and climb into the back of this iceberg so I can get up for another full day of whacking weeds in a, an environmentally sensitive wetland so I can have a pretty view in my new little bivouac in Florida to escape the uh, collapse. So if you enjoyed what Tim Stevenson had to tell you about surviving uh, the climate apocalypse, the impending collapse in the post-oil age uh, in between the ads for uh, getting, buying new vehicles and the NASCAR news, uh, please take a few seconds to thumb up this video if you did not like what Tim had to tell you, take a few seconds to thumb it down. And by all means, uh, when you're over here, please, uh, by all means, uh, subscribe to Collapse Chronicles. And do keep an eye out where I will be publishing my interview. Kind of pushing the envelope here at Collapse Chronicles with this young man named Max Wilbert. Max Wilbert is going to give us some pointers on how to bring down global industrial civilization to save the planet. But that will be coming up shortly on Collapse Chronicles. But most importantly, get out there and enjoy your new, uh, your new Subaru uh, to drive into the Collapse. Bye, guys.